This is the first of a five part landscape photography series backpacking up and along the spectacular Drakensberg Escarpment in KwaZulu Natal, South Africa. The photography opportunities on this trip were exceptional with out of this world locations and fantastic light. And as usual, I'll be taking you through my photographic approach. This was the most ambitious group trip I have ever run, lasting seven days with some considerable danger, particularly in the ascent to the top of the escarpment. I invited six photography friends along for this trip, but we also had the support of a team of guides and porters, without whom a trip like this would be much harder and far less enjoyable. That said, most of us were still carrying backpacks of 20 to 25 kilos, and at 3,000 meters, that's certainly tough going. This video covers the first two days of ascent from the beautiful valleys of Injasuti all the way up to the top of Corner Pass where the photography began in style. I hope you'll enjoy the series.
Welcome to our camp at Centenary Hut. We've been hiking for about six and a half hours today from Injasuti to get here. It's about 12 kilometers with 900 meters of elevation gain, but on a very overgrown path, it did take us uh, quite a while to get here. And it's cloudy, so no, no views. Uh, and I doubt we'll get views tomorrow, which in a way is a good thing because we've got another tough day tomorrow and we really want to be getting high up onto the escarpment to enjoy all of the amazing scenes that the Drakensberg has to offer. So we're going to have dinner, uh, a big sleep, and then uh, get at it again tomorrow morning. The second day started with some promise as the cloud began to lift, but unfortunately that was only temporary and we hiked in mist for almost the entire day. The ascent up Corner Pass begins with an immediate uphill off-path slog, which definitely isn't the way you want to start a long day of hiking. After the uphill, we began traversing steep slopes whilst gradually gaining height, and before long, we were at the crux of the route, a 50 meter scramble up some really tricky ground. The video doesn't quite do justice to how steep this ground was or how dangerous it felt. If you made a mistake here, then there'd be nothing to stop you continuing on down the mountain. It wasn't helped by the fact that much of the route was wet, a big change from the last time I was here. In retrospect, this was a little too much for the group, some of whom had a pretty sensible respect for heights. And I don't want to glamorize this sort of approach. Safety should be the number one priority on trips like this. And this route wasn't safe enough, even with the assistance of our fantastic team. It's one of the reasons that I would never do this sort of route on a commercial workshop. Nevertheless, navigating this section safely as we ultimately did gave everyone a good sense of achievement and I'm sure there was a fair bit of relief mixed in there too. A longer traverse took us around the corner and into the gully that would ultimately take us to the top of the escarpment and we had a quick break to have some lunch of the usual meat, cheese, wraps, we still had the rest of the ascent up the gully to complete and in the mist this last steep climb seemed endless. Towards the top of the escarpment is another short technical section, a chock stone to scramble around and I found this a little easier than the first section but I know some of the group found it a bit more tricky. Again it was great to have the help of the porters particularly in getting the bags up. And finally, after the last 100 meters, which of course were the steepest of the whole route, we escaped the mist and emerged into the sunshine to complete our two day 1,800 meter ascent to the top of the Drakensberg escarpment. Although we'd planned to walk on for a few more kilometers, a short walk took us around the hill to a pretty amazing first view of the Injasuti triplets, where we took our first photos of the trip. We were here for some time, the inversion kept moving and it was exciting to photograph. And you can probably tell looking at this scene that the pinnacles themselves and the way the cloud is moving around them are where the interest lies and the foreground edge doesn't really bring anything to the scene. So a simple panorama seemed like the best option. And this is the original raw file I shot made up of two landscape frames. And obviously the contrast is a big issue here. But with some careful editing, I think I brought some life back to the scene without overdoing it too much. A nice detail here is the small waterfall, which only appears during wet periods. And by the following morning, it had all but vanished. Given that we knew we had such a fantastic view here, we decided to camp just down the hill, which would also give us access to the edge that was ahead of us from that previous viewpoint. And that did mean our pitches weren't exactly what we planned. They were a little sloping, which wasn't ideal, but we were certainly in the right place for sunset and sunrise.
Well, hello from the downslope of Trojan Wall, where the sunset is just about to happen, but as you can probably see, we're currently clouded out of our view. We camped a little bit short of where we planned to be, and that's actually because as we came to the top of Corner Pass and the sun came out, we were treated to some unbelievable views over a cloud inversion, which at that time was much lower. Uh, so we've hung around this area hoping that it would be good for sunset or sunrise tomorrow and I'm really quite hopeful for sunrise. Uh, the forecast is very good but we're still going to hang around for sunset just in case this drops. And I've seen that happen a couple of times but uh, of course most of the time it just hangs around. But uh, the plan for this evening really is to just have a really good rest and uh, a good meal because getting up corner pass was absolutely brutal it's a really really tough pass there's actually some technical climbing sections where we had to hoist packs up on ropes and so on and that's actually why I don't offer this workshop to uh, just anybody this is a group of guys who I'm very very confident in uh, and it does mean that I can do this kind of exciting trip uh, which is, is very special to me too I've only been here once before uh, but yeah I'll probably pick this up tomorrow morning when I think we'll have some clear views and uh, you can get to see uh, what all the excitement is about and we waited for almost an hour in the wind hoping that we would get lucky and lucky maybe isn't the right word because it seems to me that more often than not in the Drakensberg I'm lucky so maybe that's just the way it works out there but either way the cloud did drop and some anti-crepuscular rays formed over our camp, which was a pretty great thing to photograph, but the best was yet to come. Well, you can see the inversion has dropped at sunset. It's now much lower than when we uh, first got up here. But I'm not sure if the cliff and the pinnacles in that mass of mist are actually going to appear. But if they do, I'm ready. Is there a really great photo here? I don't know, but I wish you guys could see what we are seeing here because this is incredible. The cliffs that that mist is shrouding are hundreds of meters high. I mean, the view here is just vast and uh, oh, it's just uh, such a privilege being up here. So it turns out there is quite a good shot here. Uh, just amazing cloud textures. I could try including some grasses in the foreground, but that sort of whipped cream with the reds and blues in the cloud there is just magical. And you can see this, this pinnacle, this buttress on the left breaking free of the cloud. That's one of the Indrasuti triplets, which we've come to photograph. So this is an amazing start to the trip and a great justification for all of the effort we've put in today. The scene changed really beyond recognition in no time at all and these lovely pinks and blues and purples started to come through as the sun went down and initially we couldn't see very much of the pinnacles on the left hand side there the cloud level was that bit higher on the left uh, but that wasn't a problem that allowed me to focus a bit more on the qualities of this inversion and this lovely sea of clouds in these lovely hues uh, beneath the ridge line there so I'm very pleased to have photographed uh, this scene which is just a simple crop of a single frame but a little later the inversion sank a little lower and it got darker so I was able to drag the shutter a bit more so this is a 30 second exposure that just focuses a bit more on those pinnacles and the waterfall and I think those two shots are actually quite uh, a nice contrast to one another and that's one of the great benefits of having these inversions change so much. Well, good morning, everybody. I'm pretty tired today. I didn't get too much sleep last night, uh, maybe four or five hours. So I'm not going to do a long explainer now, but I am going to show you the bits and pieces I was looking at as I walked up this edge, always trying to keep this view in mind. But this is where I'm going to take my photos. 
It was very dark at the time, so of course the footage is very dark, but hopefully you can see the pinnacles towards the centre of the frame there. And really all I'm doing here is just moving around the edge, trying to find different collections of grasses uh, that will work as foregrounds with that backdrop. And you can see here is the best example that I found, and that gives you a good sense of that vertical composition that I'm aiming for. Although I did also have a play with landscape composition, a little bit uh, further up you can see this is a sort of flat version of the foreground no diagonal lines a lot less interesting and here an amazing foreground but separated from those pinnacles by the cliff so then I thought what if I ignored the pinnacles completely and tried to make something more of this foreground maybe it doesn't work as a landscape but there more as a, a portrait this seemed like uh, a scene that was worth returning to as well so this composition is largely about not trying to overcomplicate things, recognising that I'm tired and seeing that there's a beautiful image here without having to do something more clever with specific tufts of grass or boulders. You can see there's this lovely diagonal line of grasses which themselves are very beautiful and that mirrors the diagonal lines in the hillsides leading down into the valleys there. And uh, in a way that's drawing upon an idea that I've had before and that's a, a useful aspect of, of experience is, is sometimes you can draw upon these old ideas. So I'll just uh, show you uh, a shot from a completely different area of the Drakensberg which employs the same idea. Uh, so that's why I've ended up here but there's also that uh, patch of um, bushes which I think I'm going to try when the sunlight actually comes out. So uh, it's a portrait image and uh, I probably want to be in this kind of area and just zoomed in trying to get rid of that blue sky as much as possible. Uh, so I think framing something like this is about right. I'm pretty happy with this simple composition. I actually shot it as a focus stack because uh, at the focal length I was shooting at, there just wasn't enough depth of field at the smaller apertures to bring everything into focus. So uh, it's actually a, a stack of four frames to uh, produce this final image that you see here. And I think compositionally it works well, but it's also unambitious. And that's quite deliberate because I didn't want to go running around the edge at 5 a.m. in the morning getting all stressed out when I was already tired and so I relaxed I tried to find something that I liked and then I worked with that and I think some of my workshop clients have had this problem in the past where they put so much pressure on themselves to make some epic photograph in these amazing locations that they forget that they also need to enjoy themselves and I did enjoy this morning of course it was a little bit more enjoyable because uh, I had already captured some pretty exciting images the evening before but still I think this is a, is a nice shot and I'm, I'm very pleased with it. So I think that uh, portrait shot is done. Um, I am just quickly going to shoot the landscape version coming around to the left here, maybe getting a little bit higher, um, just so I have that uh, as, as a comparison point. Uh, but I think the, um, the portrait image is, is always going to be better. And then I'm going to dash up there quickly uh, to photograph these bushes. I didn't bother editing this image because again it was a focus stack and I knew it wasn't as good as that portrait version, mostly because of that bottom left corner, it's just a bit too dark. And were it full of grasses this might have worked a little better, I certainly like the rhythm between the diagonal lines in the foreground and those on the right hand side of the background, uh, but the portrait shot is, is certainly better. This was going to be my second shot but oh I don't know really can't see this one working uh, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna take it just to show you guys but uh, don't think this one is is really doing anything for me so I forgot about the polarizer and the polarizer makes all the difference in this case if I just turn it to a polarized state there uh, you can see much better contrast and uh, I think the photo works pretty decently this image worked better than I thought it would. The polarizer and a bit of image editing has really helped to cut through the haze and bring those colors through. But it's actually the colors and not the composition that bother me here. It might be the haze, it might be the warmth of the sunlight, I'm not sure, but the color palette feels muddy and brown to me um, and kind of unpleasant, sickly to look at. And maybe that's a, a personal thing, but uh, either way, I don't like it, so I'm not gonna be doing anything 
anything uh, with this image, but not to worry because we were certainly spoiled on the following days. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. Please do like and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me. We have four more nights camped on top of the Drakensberg, all in new locations that I've not uh, shown before. So please do stay tuned for those future videos.